Hello everyone, Shiva Sapkara here. Last year, a little bit more than a year ago, I did a frunk installation on my Tesla Model 3. This is this automatic power frunk from Handshow. And I made a detailed step-by-step -step installation guide. And due to the overwhelming response that I have gotten on that video, a lot of you have been asking me, so how is it holding up a year later? What does the reliability look like? Have you had any issues, any safety concerns, warranties? So many questions that I have been receiving on that video. And I wanted to make a follow up video letting you guys know how this product is holding up after a year talk about safety concerns talk about warranty talk about everything here today one of the major questions that i get about my power frunk is well why do you need it and that is simply because teslas that are out there in the market today do not come with automatic power frunk they come with automatic power trunk but not the frunk so you still need to manually open and close your power frunk whenever you wanted to use it so there are some great benefits to using automatic power frunk, like the one that we're talking about here today. And I'll explain all of those use cases, benefits, and some of the major questions that I have been receiving. So how does this work? You can use your Tesla app to both open and close the frunk. I have never had any issues with this feature and it works really well every single time. You can be anywhere in the world with internet access and are able to open and close the frunk. This feature allows you to have someone deliver packages or even grocery to your car and just remotely control the frunk. Since you have an ability now to view the real live time footage of your Tesla at all times, this is an amazing add-on. You can also control the power frunk from inside using the center screen. You can both open and close the frunk without ever stepping out of your car. You can also use this little button to close the frunk. Over the past 15 months of installing the power frunk, I have utilized my frunk so many times for various different purposes. Grocery shopping is a big one. You can just open your frunk, put your groceries in there, and press the small button to close the frunk. You can also use that feature for curbside deliveries such as groceries, electronics, or even your favorite pizza. When you arrive home, you can simply open the frunk using your app or the Tesla screen and easily bring your stuff inside. I love not having to manually close my frunk. Even though I could use my Tesla app, I do find it very easy to just press on this little button inside to close the frunk. If your hands are tight, you can suddenly grab your stuff and use the app from inside your house to close it. I also use the frunk to store my camera gear while going out to record. This frunk fits quite a bit of stuff and I find it easier to just store my camera gear in the frunk rather than going all the way to the trunk. The frunk being a smaller space then the trunk also prevents my equipment from moving around too much. This is also a great modification that allows me to quickly store my safety gear before heading out to work. Sometimes I take my Tesla to my job site and instead of taking my dirty boots inside the car, I find it very easy to just store it in my frunk. I do have all weather mats installed in my frunk for this very purpose. As I said before, this is a great modification for grocery storage. I also added an automatic power door for my Tesla Model 3 now, I can not only open the frunk before I arrive to my parked car location, I can also automatically open the doors. A video link for the automatic power door installation is linked in the description below. Now you know some of the benefit of these accessories, let's talk about those major questions that I have been getting since I posted this video about the full installation of the automatic power frunk. A lot of you have asked, what is the difference with just installing the pneumatic power frunk struts where it helps you just go up versus installing the automatic power frunk that requires a lot of wiring. Well, even though the pneumatic power frunk allows you to fully open the frunk, it does not allow you to close it. So you have to still go outside and manually close your power frunk. And that causes some issues for some people. First of all, the fingerprint. When you are manually closing the power frunk, you tend to get a lot of fingerprint on that Tesla logo area where you are pressing on it. Second, the pneumatic power frongs, whenever they open, they are really violent because there's a lot of force those two struts are exerting at all times. So your frunk is always on pressure with those two, two struts. So as soon as you let go of the latch, it just violently opens. So there is that issue as well. The big difference with the power frong from Hanshaw is that it is not exerting that pressure at all time. The force is controlled by the motor, so it is soft pull. It is going up and down very, very slowly, and you can change the speed and whatnot. And 
the two struts are applying uniform pressure because it is all controlled using the motor and as soon as you put the latch on there is no force exerted on that so when you open the latch that is when the motor starts turns on and then pushes that frunk up or down so a very big safety concern question that i get on that video is what if this automatic power frunk decides to just randomly open while i'm driving my car and there has been some cases several years ago where people's power frunk was op automatically opening while mid-drive and i cannot comment to the quality of the installation or the product that they got or where they got the product or the type of system that they got but with this hand show system that i installed last year i have never had that issue where the frunk automatically opens while i'm driving and here's the reason why i think it is very very unlikely that will happen as long as you install the power frunk properly the Hanshaw's controller actually never initiates anything on the Tesla side. It is always looking for a signal from Tesla's computer to tell it what to do. So in this situation, Tesla's computer actually has to send a signal to Hanshaw's controller for it to operate to go up and down. And unless Tesla sends that signal, Hanshaw's system just is on a standby and it does not operate. And in this situation, Tesla has a security feature where as soon as you put your car on drive or reverse, it actually cuts that signal that is going to that front latch. So Tesla will never open the latch for Hanshaw's system to operate. So Hanshaw never gets that signal for it to operate mid-drive. And let me demonstrate this feature a little bit better here. So when we're in park, we can use the front and it will open and then it will close. So it's fully open now. We're just gonna hit that and then it will close. So in park, it works, and that's exactly how it's supposed to be working. So when we shift to drive, there is no buttons here. There is no control for me to press on the car to be able to control the frunk or the trunk. So I can't do anything while I'm in drive. So we're in drive gear right there. And when I press on this frunk icon, the button activates, but nothing happens. Of course, the frunk didn't open here. Again, nothing. It didn't open. So the communication gets cut so that when you are in drive, even you are in zero miles per hour here, when you are in drive or reverse or any of the gear other than park, the frunk is not going to open. Tesla cuts the communication to the frunk. So when we put this car into park, now we are back on track. The front activates. And some for weird reason, Hanshaw's system malfunctions and it tries to open that front and put a lot of pressure on those struts. Tesla is still not going to release that latch for it to go up. That means even though it will provide that pressure on the struts, Tesla is not allowing it to open. That means it will not actually open. That means there is extra layers of security embedded onto this system to make you safe while driving and while operating this device. Another big question that I get is, will this power frunk stop if it detects obstacle? And the answer is yes and no. So it doesn't have an ultrasonic sensor or a radar sensor or a vision sensor for it to know that there is an obstacle visually. However, it does have a torque sensor where if it detects any resistance opening or closing it will stop so for example let's say you are unloading your groceries from the front and someone accidentally presses that front close button inside the car or through the app and the front is coming down now you can stop that front as soon as you see it coming down by applying the pressure so you can hold the front and it'll stop right there in the track i also wanted to test what happens if my hands were really low or you have you know something that is obstacle in that latch area down there so i have so much confidence in the system i decided to actually test this out so here i'm putting my hand really really low where it is right next to the latch just to test that anti-pinch feature and as the frunk is coming down it did hit my hand but it did not continue squeezing it or applying pressure so that i was hurt i did not feel any of that pressure and of course, I was able to just remove my hands from here and the frunk was very loose at that point. So this is a quick demonstration of a feature that even though that it does not have any fancy ultrasonic sensors or whatnot, it is still stops if it detects some resistance. Well, opening the power frunk, if you think that is going to hit something, your garage, if there's any obstacles on the top, 
you can do the same thing. You can just apply some pressure from the top and it will just stop right there. Another big question that I get is, will this device void my Tesla warranty? And that is a really big question and there's a lot of nuances on that question and I definitely don't want to misguide you. According to the federal government, Tesla cannot void my warranty simply because I install an aftermarket accessories. But I'm not a lawyer and my interpretation at least is that as long as I install these accessories and my installation or the product that I'm installing do not damage any of the Tesla's OEM parts, then I'm good to go. But for some reason, if I mess up the installation and all of a sudden my frunk has various components, the OEM components that are damaged because of this part or my installation, then yeah, sure, Tesla can make me pay for repair of those parts that would be not covered under the warranty. However, I have taken my Tesla to the service center numerous times and if you have been following my channel you know we have modified my tesla so much we have our own swiveling screen mount the yoke we have the center screen the trunk the front the eagle eye tail lights we have so many modifications in our tesla and i have never had any encounter with tesla service center that told me that my warranty was voided Matter of fact, a lot of those Tesla reps tell me that this is really impressive and the type of accessories that I have in my car. However, it might depend on the Tesla service center, it might depend on Tesla's policy, so please do your research before you install a product like this and make sure you're comfortable installing a product to the standard that it does not cause any damages to your other Tesla parts. Another common question that I get is, I have a newer Tesla Model 3 or a Model Y. Will your installation video be the same for those models? The installation is gonna be slightly different because of that housing, the spring housing that you have in the middle. Generally, yes, you can follow along and complete the installation, but just for that part, there is gonna be a separate set of instruction that it will come with your kit when you purchase the kit. Another question is, I have the new 2022 Tesla Model 3 and Model Y with the AMD chip and a lithium ion 12 volt battery. Is this kit still applicable for that model? And yes, with that lithium ion battery, you can still plug into the positive terminal and then use a ground elsewhere like how I show in my front here. Just the slight difference is you do have to pick which version that you have so that you, they can ship that controller out that is gonna be compatible with your model. If you decide to check this product out, please find the link down below and you take advantage of that special limited time discount code that I have in the description. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this video helpful, please consider hitting that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Also, please give this video a thumbs up and share these videos with other friends and families, other Tesla owners that might find this information beneficial. As always, I have a lot more Tesla accessories coming here in the channel very soon. So stay tuned for all of those videos. Thank you very much for your continued support. Namaste.